it's with a, a great deal of pride and I don't know, just recognition of the work of a young lady who has in the last decade or so risen through the ranks, showing her expertise, her knowledge and her courage, if you will, and has now become the executive director of the Drug Policy Alliance. I want to welcome Cassandra Frederick. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Dean. Oh, thank you for uh, joining us. Now, I, I want to first off just commend you. I, I've started this thing called, uh, you know, um, claiming the moral high ground in the drug mm -hmm. war. And I think you have taken a similar mm, outlook, uh, attitude into your administration, have you not? Yeah, I do. I think we are right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think are. that if you're going to talk about what's best for community, that's what we're offering the whole, the, the first drug laws were racialized tools of social control when we saw like Chinese um, migrants in California. And so you can always draw a direct line between the groups of people that the government didn't like um, and how they use drugs as a way to really uh, create the parameters and propaganda to make, to use drugs as a scapegoat, um, as a way to control people who are not white. And uh, this has played out, as I said, horribly over the last year with uh, Breonna Taylor and, and now with this trial of George Floyd. That's right. The truth is coming out. The truth is, right. is, is there for all to see, is it not? Yeah. You know, I think in this past summer, when we look at Breonna Taylor, you have to ask the questions, why was she not safe in her own bed? And it's like all the money that has been put forward with law enforcement and and how, that, and how that money was funded by drug war money and how it was based on false drug information. And George Floyd, everyone saw what happened with the police officer having his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck. And somehow um, George Floyd's uh, history around addiction and opioids is what is on trial as opposed to the brute use of force that we all saw. It's... Um... I, I, I don't, it's just so ugly. It, it's hard to talk about sometimes the, the belief system that exists that, um, you know, uh, people are, are, are needing punishment. If they use mm -hmm. drugs, they, they're just unworthy of respect in this life. And, and that's just so wrongheaded, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, it, it limits our ability to see each other. And so I think um, when you talk about things around the moral high ground, it's really about getting us to see each other in our fullness so that we can be able to give people the things that they need. We now have uh, state legislatures around the country changing or considering laws to make those who distribute fentanyl uh, major drug traffickers, worthy of a major uh, prison sentences, when the truth be told, most of the times it's just one friend acquiring for another it's, it's blown way out of proportion. Your, your response, Cassandra. I think uh, the next, one of the biggest challenges that our movement has is to talk about drug sales. Uh, we haven't done it so often and oftentimes our opposition has framed it in a way. So many people miss the fact that sharing substances is considered sales. That's the way it is in my home state of New York. And we actually need to break apart what that is so we can move through the stigma um, and uh, navigate that together. You guys just made a major, your governor, your legislature just made a major step towards recognizing the futility of prohibition. In other words, legalizing marijuana. Let's talk about that. What, how is that going to pan out in New York? Well, we have passed pretty progressive legislation around cannabis legalization and now it's all really about implementation. Who's going to be in power? Who's going to be navigating these conversations? How do we move forward? Um, and so I think that that's really exciting. I think it really depends on implementation at this point. Um, we have put out the, some, of, some really good raw materials for us to build uh, the end of cannabis prohibition in the state. And I think we're just gonna have to fight to make sure that it actually fits the intent. So much of what we know for the drug war has really been about um, how can we keep communities, they, they try to do it under like, this is what's gonna keep communities safe. This is what's going to um, 
navigate this conversation, blah, 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 blah. And what we're saying is one, it hasn't keep, kept people safe. Two, the overdose rate is the highest it's ever been. Three, mass incarceration is happening. All the things that you said would happen if we turned our backs on our loved ones, if we um, incarcerated our loved ones, if we punished our loved ones, none of those things have been a deterrent. And so um, that has been um, difficult to navigate, which is like really getting people to understand that what's happening right now doesn't work. And I think so much of that is like, in the way that we often put out our solutions, folks are like, well, what if it doesn't work? And I'm like, well, what's, what, what's, what is actually working right now? Nothing. No. Cassandra, I look at it this way. It is a belief system. It is mm -hmm. a quasi religion that the drug war, no matter what must endure forever. It's, it's, it's a bad religion in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it is one, I think part of the reason why it has this feeling is that so much of it is rooted in other belief systems and they've created the drug war to strengthen those beliefs, right? That people can't make choices for themselves. Um, you, you should not alter your current state that, you know, all these different things like um, folks of color are not worthy. They're untrustworthy that um, poor people can't be able to take, they, they shouldn't be able to take care of their kids. Like all the, there are things that underlie the drug war yeah. um, logic and the drug war logic just fills it in and bolsters it. And they use drugs as a way to scare people into that belief system. Okay, friends, I tell you what, once again, we've been speaking with uh, Ms. Cassandra Frederick. She is the executive director of the Drug Policy Alliance and uh, a courageous woman. Uh, I, I wish her great success moving forward and that the DPA can claim that moral high ground and can begin to uh, change this equation to something more positive. Well, we'll, we'll join you on the moral high ground because there have been a lot of people in the movement that have held the moral high ground for a very long time. Um, and I think uh, more of us are going to reinforce our position there, but bring along more people. Well, with that, uh, I guess we'll wrap it up again, folks. If you want to learn more about the Drug Policy Alliance, their website is drugpolicy.org. Thank you, Cassandra. Thanks, Dean. Bye-bye. I'm Dean Becker. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it motivating. Now, please like and share and subscribe if you want more content. Now, to hear a longer interview with this week's video guest, I uh, request that you visit our website. Links are in the description below. Now, each year, we produce hundreds of drug war-related programs for a network of broadcast affiliates in the U.S. and Canada. Now, we also produce lots of content for YouTube as well. And you can access nearly 9,000 of our programs at drugtruth.net.